going to order the Monday, June 17, 2019, regular meeting of the 37th Council of the City of Berkeley. Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll? Mayor Pro Tem Baker. Here. Councilmember Blanchard. Here. Councilmember Dean. Here. Councilmember Gavin. Here. Councilmember Hennon. Here. Councilmember Stedman. Here. And Mayor Turbrack. Here. Our first order of business tonight is the approval of our agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Support. support. Motion by Councilmember Gavin with support from Councilmember Dean. Are there any changes or additions tonight? Seeing none, Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on our agenda? Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. And Turbrack? Yes. At this time, would you please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have now come to the citizens' comments uh, portion of our agenda. You may present your thoughts on issues that are not included on tonight's agenda. Council members will not engage you in discussion, but if your concern needs to be a member or needs to be addressed by a member of the city staff or a department of the city, please sign your name on the sheet provided at the clerk's table. You may speak on a specific agenda item while it is being considered. And when you come to the microphone, please state your name and city of residence. Charles Terrell from Berkeley. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about some DDA purchases. Uh, specifically, three things. The first two, purchase for legal services and the purchase of engineering services that were discussed at their last board meeting. Uh, our city manager, who also is the uh, secretary of the board uh, on the engineering services, asked about what kind of engineering services they thought they'd need for the year. Uh, two things that came up, one, one was to try to get local control over 12 Mile. The other was to restart the Coolidge crosswalks. Mr. Mayor, you've said many, many times about no, we're not going to restart the Coolidge crosswalks. Mm -hmm. uh, also, legal services. Again, our city manager took the lead on that, asked about that, and brought forward several very good arguments as to why the DDA has no business having their own legal counsel, that using city counsel should be good enough, and he was the lone dissenting vote on that. Uh, per code 4272 says in part, the DDA shall not uh, engage in any purchases without prior council approval. They have no council approval for these two. A third purchase is office space. They've leased office space with Folio. Again, that has not come in front of council, so 4272 is there. Also, 4275 deals with uh, the DDA and real property. It says it will not lease or purchase real property without approval of council. They have not gotten that approval. And a matter of fact, that they've already made a payment. It's in the warrant for tonight. <coughs> well over $1,000 payment to Folio. And in the language of the code book, uh, the term lease is a lowercase letter, so it's not lease only or purchase only. Lease using a lowercase letter means anything that's not a purchase, so a subscription, a rental, a membership, or a true lease. They can't do that without <coughs> council approval. What I'd like to ask you to do is a budget amendment to pull these three things out of the DDA's budget for me the upcoming year. We also have, can have a continuing issue on 4273, which has been discussed in front of this board in the past. Uh, and there's been correspondence back and forth. 
the treasurer of the DDA sent me a copy of Mr. Starin's letter, and I thought there were some errors both in logic and in fact in that letter, so I responded with my own letter. Uh, the city managers talked to Mr. Starin, and he stands by his letter. I stand by mine. And now it's really up to the council. You, get, you folks need to make a decision. Uh, does the very plain language of the code mean what it says it means? And that's, that's my point in the whole thing is it's very plain language. It's very easy to see that uh, per the language in there, all projects initiated by the DDA must go to the city's auditors for review and comment to, to assure that there is adequate revenue sources for it. I mean, one that's coming up very soon that we'll see, which just gets all kinds of involvement in terms of revenue sources, will be the MoGo bicycle rentals. And how is that going, how are we going to be assured that we're not going to end up with a big bill on the back end of the MoGo bicycle rentals? except through review and comment by the auditors. And if you choose not to make a decision either way, we can let a judge make that decision as to what the, the language in the code really means. Mr. Starin had an opinion, I have an opinion. If, if the council isn't, isn't willing or able to weigh in on that, we can always take it to a judge and let a judge decide what it means. We can. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Seeing nobody else coming to the microphone for citizens' comments. Okay, we will move on uh, from Add that item on our agenda and move on to our order of business today. Uh, first up is our consent agenda. Ms. Boucher, would you please read the items on tonight's consent agenda? Approve the minutes. Matter of approving the minutes of the 37th City Council meeting on Monday, June 3rd, 2019. Warrant, warrant, matter of approving warrant number 1339. Resolution number R1619, matter of honoring Tom Bustance, commander, American Legion Post 374 in Berkeley and proclamation number P0719, matter of declaring June 2019 as LGBTQ plus Pride Month. Is there a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? Motion to approve. Support. Motion to approve by Council Member Dean, support from Council Member Blanchard. <coughs> Are there any corrections or additions? Okay, despite that beeping, seeing none. Um, <laughs> Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on tonight's consent agenda? Dean? Yes. Gavin? <coughs> yes. Hennon? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. And Turbach? Yes. Tonight's consent agenda has passed. We now move on to our regular agenda. Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number one on tonight's regular agenda? Recognitions, presentations, matter of any recognitions or presentations from the consent agenda. We have two this evening. Uh, first up is resolution R1619, and Commander, would you please uh, come with the microphone. So this resolution uh, has been presented recently, as you will see in here, as it signifies the day of June 9th, but I'm going to read it again anyways uh, for everybody here and uh, those watching at home, and then the microphone will be yours. A resolution of the Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan, honoring Tom Bustance, Commander, American Legion, Post 374 in Berkeley. Whereas the Berkeley Post 374 of the American Legion is an integral part of the city of Berkeley. And whereas under Commander Tom Bustance's leadership, the Post has been an active part of many of the city's activities, including Berkeley Days, Taste of Berkeley, Lids for Kids, the Fire Open House, Memorial Day and Veterans Day ceremonies, and the Holiday Lights Parade. And whereas Commander Tom Bustans took on tremendous challenge with the possibility of the post closing due to bankruptcy, and through his leadership and negotiating skills, 
return the post to solvency. And whereas every year through his efforts, money and food are collected to feed homeless veterans at Christmas time. And whereas Tom understands that giving of oneself in service to another empowers the giver and the recipient, and that volunteers are vital to our future as caring and productive posts and city. And whereas Tom has continued to further the American Legion goals of service, patriotism, and camaraderie, and whereas Tom welcomed veterans and their families to all post events, and now therefore the City of Berkeley resolves that the Council of the City of Berkeley hereby recognizes that June 9th, 2019 was Commander Tom Bustance Day in Berkeley and urges everyone to recognize Tom for his exceptional commitment to Post 374, the Berkeley American Legion, as well as his dedication to the City of Berkeley. Signed today uh, by me, but you also received a resolution that was signed by the entire council. Well, Mr. Mayor and council members, I'm honored to be here and I'm honored to accept being uh, June 9th, uh, Commander Tom Buston's day. <laughs> I don't think I've uh, had that many accolades laid on me in my whole lifetime. We had a surprise party, as you all know. I, I didn't know, but <laughs> <laughs> when I walked in and saw so many Legionnaires, friends from the past, and council members, I was, I was overwhelmed, and my eyes were overwhelmed with tears. Uh, it was a wonderful thing. I'm proud to be a part of the city of Berkeley. Although I live in Troy, my son started playing hockey here when he was 10 years old at the Berkeley Ice Arena. I met so many wonderful people here that when I decided to transfer my Legion membership to the city of Berkeley. I call the city of Berkeley hey, my Tom, second can you, home. Can you hold the microphone if you're- I'm sorry. Just, I, just so they can hear you and, and people on TV can hear you. There you go. I call the city of Berkeley my second home, even though I live in Troy. I love this place, and five years ago, when I took over the commandership of the Berkeley American Legion, we were in deep weeds. We were in death's grip and subject to foreclosure. I didn't want that to happen because I believe the American Legion and Berkeley are a team, and without the Legion here, you'd have a void. So we fought hard. I thank you as community members that showed up at our fish fries and helped support us. And I thank the city council who was always there for me. It's tough to say goodbye. I stepped down Tuesday night after five years. I'll still be active in the Legion and I'll still wanna work with you to make us a better team. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you. one too. Thank you very much. That way you can have them on both walls. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to believe these words are all about me. They <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly Thank are. Uh, Tom, before you leave, do you want to give us a quick word of who is going to be stepping in? Tell us a little bit about Ike. Yes. Uh, taking over for me will be uh, Bill Eisenhower. They call him Ike because his last name's Eisenhower. <laughs> Bill was a major in the Marines. He joined us about three years ago, became very active in our post, starting as a junior vice, then a senior vice. He has big shoes, he's a Marine, so I know he'll fill my little shoes well, <laughs> and I'll work with him. But I have to say it was a tongue-in-cheek thing for me, and being here tonight, it's very tongue-in-cheek. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, we certainly will um, miss you. We know we'll see you at the Legion, but again, thanking you for everything that you've done, um, where the Legion was, where it is now, in, in great shape. Uh, it's a testament to you, but also the folks around you and the folks that you were able to, to galvanize and, and follow your lead into taking the Legion and getting the Legion where it is today. So thank you again. Uh, we will be seeing you around. Don't, don't, don't hide from us. We'll find you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, Ms. Boucher, would you? Oh, no, you don't have to. I got it. <laughs> I have asked Mayor Pro Tem Baker to read Proclamation P0719. Thank you, Your Honor. A proclamation of the Council of the City of Berkeley, Michigan, declaring June 2019 as LGBTQ plus Pride Month. Whereas the city of Berkeley is a welcoming community, an exceptional place to live, work, play, learn, build a business, and raise a family, and whereas the city of Berkeley recognizes the importance of equality and freedom, and whereas our nation was founded on and is guided by a set of principles which include that every person is created equal, has rights to their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and that each shall be accorded the full recognition and protection of the law. And whereas the city of Berkeley's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community are a vital part of all fields and professions and continue to make our community a stronger one. And whereas the city of Berkeley is dedicated to fostering acceptance of all of its residents and preventing discrimination, harassment, and bullying based on sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. And whereas Berkeley is, th is strengthened by and thrives upon the rich diversity of ethnic, cultural, racial, gender, and sexual identities of all of its residents, this all contributes to the vibrant nature of our city. And whereas it is imperative that young people in our community regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, feel valued, safe, empowered, and supported by their peers and community leaders. Now therefore, it is proclaimed that the Mayor and Council of Berkeley hereby proclaim and recognize June 2019 as LGBTQ plus Pride Month in the city of Berkeley. And we urge residents to recognize the contributions made by members of the LGBTQ plus community and to actively promote the principles of equality, liberty, and justice. Proclaim this 17th day of June, 2019, at a regular meeting of the Berkeley City Council. Signed by Daniel J. Turbrecht, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Ms. Boucher, would you now please read item number two on our agenda? Motion number M4219, matter of authorizing a junior women's club and downtown development authority DDA event, Robina Rhapsody and Couples Night Out on Robina to the alley north of 12 Mile Road on Thursday, July 18, 2019, and on Thursday, August 22, 2019 from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Approval is conditional upon the submission of required items and documents prior to event dates. Is there a motion to approve M4219? Motion to approve. Support. Motion approved by Council Member Dean with support from Mayor Pro Tem. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, let's see, we are welcoming back Robina Rap City. Uh, if you're a short hiatus, we're, we're happy to have them uh, return to 12 Mile and, and play some fantastic music coming up. Uh, also this year included on that uh, this application here is a couple's night out, which is the successor to a ladies' night out. Uh, that's also an event that would be sponsored uh, in part by the Downtown Development Authority as well. And so you have reviews from the pertinent departments here as well as a uh, memo from uh, Public Safety Director Matt Kane outlining um, his thoughts on the matter as well as um, sign-offs from the departments that this particular event would uh, interact with here. Uh, we do recommend approval on, these item, on both these items. Denise, you look... I'm, I'm used to seeing you when you're bearing gifts for us. <laughs> <laughs> I could go get the trophies no, that's okay. if We're you good. would like. Okay. Thank you for being here. Anything you'd like to add to that? I would just like to add that we are excited that we can bring back a couple of the Rubina Rhapsodies this year. We are working with the DDA um, and trying to make it kind of a citywide event with the couples night. Um, we did speak, so July 18th is the first one, and we'll be closing the road. Um, Rabina, just north of Catalpa, Madigan's Attic is gonna be the band that's gonna be playing on that date. Um, and it, it's a lot of fun. If it's a free concert. If anybody has not been by to see this, it's really a lot of fun. We'll have 
some events for the kids. Um, you know, people will grab some dinner and sit in their lawn chairs and listen to the music and dance. And it's just, it's a great night out. Um, whether it's couples night out or whether you're single, it's okay to still come <laughs> to the event that night. Um, we're doing the second one is going to be August 22nd, so after all of the Dream Cruise Cruise Fest uh, festivities. And we're kind of looking at that one as a back to school event. Okay. So kind of the last hurrah <laughs> before the kids start back to school. Um, we're not sure about the band for that one yet, but I have talked to Oakland County 4-H and they're going to be bringing their inflatable archery um, that was such a big hit at Berkeley Days. So we'll have, you know, that one is definitely going to be geared more for, more towards the kids and we'll have, you know, tattoos and hula hoops and bubble machines and inflatable archery, which is actually a thing. <laughs> um, and it's, they're both going to be just, it's a fantastic night. It's a great night to get together with your neighbors and listen to music that everyone loves. So I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Questions for Denise? I just have a comment. I'm just very happy to see these concerts coming back. Having a business on Rubina, it was always just a fun thing. And um, it was nice to see people out and enjoying the summer evenings and it, everything about it was positive. So I'm glad that you guys are bringing that back. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I'm glad that we're able to do it again yeah. this year. So, and I appreciate DDA mm. for working with us um, to try to pick the dates and, and coordinate. I think that's, it's gonna be a good partnership for the Rabina Rhapsody. Agreed. Yeah, that's, it's nice to see. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? Thank you again, Denise, for all that you have done and all that you continue to do uh, in our city. Uh, we are looking forward to it. I, I, it's shocking that we're already talking about school being back in. <laughs> <laughs> they just got out today is the first day, right? Yeah, well, it's going to go quickly. So without any uh, further ado, seeing no additional questions or comments, anybody, any of our friends out here? No? Okay. Seeing none, uh, Ms. Bouch, would you please call the roll on M4219? Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. Steadman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. And Turbrock? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number three on tonight's agenda? Motion number M4319, matter of approving a downtown development authority DDA event, Art and About on Dorothea between Coolidge Highway and the Alley on Friday, August 2nd, 2019, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Approval is conditional upon the submission of required items and documents prior to event dates. Is there a motion to approve M4319? So moved, Your Honor. Support. Motion made by Mayor Pro Tem with support from Council Member Gavin. Mr. Baumgarten? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, under the same packet as the, the previous agenda item was the third of the three events proposed by the Downtown Development Authority. This is going to be the Art and About, which is, was a popular series last year. This year, the DDA is focusing on a, a single evening uh, for this event, but it, it won't have a concert with it. So it was appropriate to bring it for, for you as an independent item. Um, so you see uh, much of the same application applies to this. Um, there are, the information has been provided, all the pertinent details. Again, the review provided by um, Chief Kane stands and he also included uh, the August 2nd event as well. So again, uh, uh, recommending approval to council. And our DDA chair is available as well. Mr. Chairman, anything you'd like to add? <clears throat> nope, just another great event for uh, the city of Berkeley. Um, we had a lot of success with it, but um, as Matt said, we are uh, trying to focus on one specific day and try and build the event you know, from there. Um, but uh, it has a lot of uh, artists' interest, and it's going to be a great night. Excellent. Are there questions or comments? Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, do you have volunteers that are going to work the, the barricades this year? Yes. The reason I say that is last year <laughs> when I went down there, uh, the barricades weren't put up, and when I, I questioned about it, there was two young ladies that said, oh, that's our job. So they went out there and they slid the barricades into place. But I think they were artists because they put the orange sign toward the inside so the artist could see it and left the white side to the street. <laughs> and I, then I had to explain to them that, that you know, that's <laughs> to keep the cars from turning in there. So uh, well, they need just a little more training. <laughs> We'll make sure we have somebody with uh, <laughs> adequate prep for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? 
All right, thank you uh, for being with us this evening. Uh, any additional questions, comments from the crowd? Again, an another event that we are looking forward to. It seems that we are gonna have a summer full of great events as we typically do in the city of Berkeley and throw in Summerfest and everything else. Um, Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on M4319? Hennon? Yes. Stegman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. And Turbrack? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number four on tonight's agenda? Motion number M4419, matter of approving, authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Inner City Contracting LLC, 18701 Grand River Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48223, for a, for a total project construction budget for demolition of the Berkeley Ice Arena at a cost not to exceed $287,837. This expenditure will be charged to account number 546-697-931000. Is there a motion to approve M4419? Motion to approve. Support. Motion to approve by Council Member Dean with support from Council Member Blanchard. Mr. Baumgarten. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Uh, continuing our conversation on this, uh, this item, uh, you'll see that it's included in your packet uh, in order to select a vendor for, for this job. Uh, we uh, did go out to bid. We received several bids. Uh, we had a total cost. We're happy to say that, um, that the Price indicated here came in lower than we anticipated, so we were we were happy about that. Uh, your packet includes a very well written and, and very complete memo from the uh, Parks and Recreation Director, as well as some of the bid specs and the tabulations performed following the um, moving out to moving out to bid from this. Uh, Teresa is here, as well as Roland Alex from HRC and representatives from Inner City Contracting as well. Good evening. Teresa. Um, thank you, Mr. Barton-Gunn. Uh, as I laid out in my memo, I'm also joined here by Curtis Johnson and Paul Sherman from Inner City Contracting. As I laid out in my memo, we did receive six bids. We were happy with the six bids we received. Um, we then took a look at the three lowest bids. HRC um, asked for qualifications and references from those three lowest bids, um, spoke with references uh, on similar type work, grading, demolition, projects that they had done. After we took a look at what we wanted to have complete in the final project and taking out the masonry wall that was originally in the project, Inner City uh, ended up being the lowest qualified bidder. Uh, the references came back uh, well received, um, well checked, similar type work, and we felt conf confident um, with HRC's recommendation that they would move forward with the project. As Mr. Baumgarten indicated, we were happy with where we ended up in terms of um, cost for this. Um, taking out the masonry wall, um, making that decision that that's something we'll look at possibly in the future, um, but not at this point. And then also the city has decided we're doing the, we did the asbestos testing and are handling the abatement prior to the project getting started. Um, we have spoken with Inner City and they're confident that they will complete the work um, at that September 30th deadline um, for the complete uh, backfill as well. And we feel confident in the work that they perform and in the work that they're going to perform um, beginning within the next two to three weeks, probably closer to that three week mark. Um, there's still a couple of disconnects that we need for um, the utilities and uh, a couple other things that have to happen um, before we can actually start, but they'll start preliminary work within the next couple of weeks. We don't anticipate any uh, issues with the insulation that's no. under the ice? Absolutely not, no. Okay. That's good. <laughs> Questions for our director? Uh, Curtis and Paul, thank you for being here uh, this evening. Is there anything uh, you'd like to add or that we left out? What are we expecting with the project? Because we won't know until we start knocking things down. Uh, no, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I'm Curtis Johnson, I'm the president of City Contracting, and um, you know our motto is to be a good neighbor, and uh, we know we're an extension of you guys, and um, we're going to perform our work in a safe, uh, fast quick what's another good ten dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh quiet yeah, yeah. Um, no we um we, we appreciate the opportunity and um you know i'll make y'all proud thank you thank you curtis so this is uh just, I'm, I'm sure you're aware this is a, this is an emotional uh event for the city to lose the arena um so i i'm happy to hear that you are 
going to take it down with the requisite care, not only concern for the building, but for the residents around it and uh, as efficiently as possible. Mayor Pro Tem. Oh, thank you, Your Honor, and, and uh, much agreed. This is with a heavy heart that we proceed with this uh, necessary project, and, um, and thank you for being here tonight and, and to the team for making all this happen. Um, from the residents' perspective, if you could please just share a few thoughts about what they can anticipate experiencing in terms of what kinds of communications will they receive if they're in the, the pathway of, of debris being removed and um, machinery coming in and times of operation, well, is it a 24-hour operation or is it just, you know, from tw 10 to 2 or, or how that all works? If you could let us know what we're in for. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, we provided Teresa with a, a, a a program delivery plan um, and it can be adjusted um, we do have some weather concerns um, I think it rained 26 days and <laughs> yeah um, and we're going to enter from Oxford um, and the biggest thing with demo is um, you know safety and, and dust and you know we'll be applying water and um, whatever but in essence um, because this job is not like underground pipes or something like that I mean, we can get in and get out. Um, I'm going to ask her what's going on. I mean, because when we did the pre, um, the, the walkthrough, you know, they were doing a carnival. So I'm sure some right. things like that going on, and um, mm -hmm. we'll be able to make that um, August 31st deadline as well as the September 30th um, deadline. I mean, we can work around whatever we need to do. Uh, we just want to get the job um, done as quickly as possible, as safely as possible, because right now it went from um, a hope to a contingent liability on my balance sheet. Um, I, I got to get this done. <laughs> I, I can speak a little bit more. As we talked about um, at the at a prior meeting uh, where we were awarding um, HRC with handling the engineering services, we talked about um, how on other projects with HRC, um, those neighbors on Oxford and also Rubino, which will be affected with the hauling um, of and, and the trucks, will receive um, you know an information sheet and uh, the hours will be within you know the city's code in terms of work. There, it's not. It's certainly not 24 hours. Um, and right, um, and they will receive you know information, and then they're always welcome to call to speak with us. They'll also be an HRC representative that will have they'll have their number, um, you know, similar to other projects that they've done. So um, they'll they'll certainly be alerted um, within the next couple of weeks before the project starts. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, to the residents, um, this gentleman right here, Paul Sherman, who's my project manager and superintendent, for anyone who's been to Atlanta, they, they have a big mall down there called Lennox Mall. Across the street from it is another nice size mall called Phipps Plaza, and he tore it down and it's on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> See him with the mallet, huh? <laughs> Good references. Thank you. Um, additional questions? Either for Curtis, Paul, Roland, Teresa. Mr. Alex, anything you'd like to add from HRC's point of view on this? Um, just that uh, um, Curtis did mention a, a project in Atlanta, but we uh, have some great references locally, uh, specifically Southfield, Ann Arbor, Detroit. So they're a well-known local firm. Um, not only were they were they low bid, but we also were very satisfied um, with all their references. So we're very comfortable um, with them proceeding with this project. And like Teresa mentioned, uh, there will be an HRC contact on the flyer sheets that will be uh, hand delivered to the affected neighbors. Probably not just on Robin and Oxford, but some of the adjacent streets as well, just so people know if they have questions who to contact. So, yeah, we think it's uh, as you said, it is a heavy with a heavy heart that we're proceeding with this project but um, given the direction to, to go we, we think this is a, a great contractor and it should be a very successful project thank you councilmember gavin thank you your honor just a real quick question do we have any idea off the top of your head and if not that's totally fine um but what the standalone cost might be for the a masonry wall should we choose to go ahead with it in the future So it ranges anywhere between probably thirty thousand and sixty thousand for a standalone. Would you? Yep. Bet? That's correct. Yep. Okay. So, All yeah. right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And just to get to a question we had at the beginning, how much insulation was <coughs> under the ice? <laughs> um, eighteen inches. Zero. The plans called for eighteen inches, but when we drilled down to do asbestos testing, um, it was never installed when the arena was built. There was water and clay up to the cement. Minor miracle that we were able to keep ice in there. Correct. At all for as long as we did when there was no insulation there. Thank you.
No additional questions or comments. Okay. Seeing none, I want to thank all of you for being here. Uh, certainly, Curtis and Paul, I uh, appreciate you making it a priority to be here tonight to address the residents and, and to speak with council. Seeing no further questions, any questions out there that I can't see? Okay. Uh, Ms. Boucher, would you sadly, but necessarily call the roll on M4419? Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. And Turbine? I lied. Yes, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> are we going to be removing signs that say Ice Arena? I forgot about that. I was mentioned or reminded of that by oh. my father today as he was driving around saying, I can't go there anymore. <laughs> Why are there signs still up? Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just a heads up, we want to probably just pull those Mark, signs. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Roy. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Item number five, please, Ms. Boucher. Resolution number R1719, matter of authorizing the West Nile virus expense reimbursement request. Is there a motion to approve R1719? Motion, motion to, to approve. Support. Motion to approve by Council Member Stedman with support from Council Member Blanchard. Mr. Baumgarten. I think, Mr. Mayor, as many of you recall, this is an annual item that we are able to do every year in partnership with Oakland County. Um, we have some good information in your packet here. The, um, this is overseen by the DPW, so Derek uh, went ahead and, and put together the packet here. That packet includes uh, the resolution itself, uh, a memo outlining the history of, of how we've utilized these uh, monies, as well as a info packet provided to us by Oakland County on the, the, what we need to know about West Nile uh, virus and the preventative measures that we're taking to make sure it doesn't uh, uh, become a huge health issue here in Oakland County. So, and we're joined by DPW Director Derek Schuler today. Mr. Schuler, greetings. Let's talk about West Nile. Thank you. Um, so, this is an annual program that the county reimburses us for program supplies, essentially, which for us is mosquito larvicide that we deposit in approximately 1,600 catch basins throughout the city. And Berkeley has done this for many consecutive years. Um, not every community participates in this. We certainly hope that they do because mosquitoes from adjacent communities could come into our town and bite our residents. But So we take care of our catch basins, which in turn helps protect our residents uh, from West Nile. The particular type of mosquito is a mosquito that loves to breed in the catch basins. So they're a good place for us to treat. And we've been doing this now for a number of years. So Oakland County gives us a little bit of money back uh, for the larvicide and then our staff uh, deposits those briquettes, they're called, into all of the catch basins. So not much has changed in the program. We're receiving the same amount that we've received for a few, for a few years. And um, you know, the program is well underway. Mike's been going around. We're almost complete with all of the catch basins. This year we, we cleaned all 1,600 of those catch basins before we deposited the larvicide. Um, so we've got a nice clean slate to work with. Nice. I'm happy to answer any questions. How do residents know if their catch basin's been treated? They do get painted. Um, um, I know we've, we've ticked the catch basins with different colors from time to time, both with cleaning and larvicide, so you'll see a paint mark uh, next to those catch basins, oftentimes even um, on the sidewalk and some other areas uh, so that we call out attention to that particular catch basin. Thank you. Additional questions for Director Schuler. Seeing none, as was mentioned, this is uh, an annual item and, and not much has changed. We continue to be vigilant in treating um, our catch basins on an annual basis. Any questions from anybody else today? Okay, seeing none, thank you, Derek. Uh, Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on R1719? Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. Stedman? Yes. And Turbrack? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number six on tonight's agenda? <coughs> Motion number M4519, matter of accepting a proposal from ISCG Incorporated, 612 North Main Street, Royal Oak, Michigan, 48067, to perform a renovation project to the library's youth activity room for $11,054 from building improvements account 1017389760000. Is there a motion to approve M4519? So moved. Support. Motion made by Council Member Gavin with support from Council Member Dean. 
Mr. Baumgarten. Thank you. Uh, fresh off his very successful ice cream social, we are joined by <laughs> library director, uh, Mr. Matt Church, uh, who included in your packet a memo outlining the uh, results of the bid as well as the request for proposals document itself. Uh, you'll see the justification is included in uh, Mr. Church's memo, so. Mr. Director, welcome. All right, thank you. Uh, so this is a renovation of the youth activity room. Um, so it's a really busy room. We use it for story times. Uh, throughout the school year, we do uh, three a week, and then we also use it for uh, just an open play room, activity room, coloring sheets, puzzles, um, and then it's also a space for meetings as well. So uh, the tree board meets there occasionally, friends of the library meets there uh, occasionally, um, and then we've recently installed uh, audiovisual equipment in the room as well. So we'll have um, the ability to show movies, um, incorporate multimedia with our story times, and then also just as a meeting space have more functionality there as well. So um, with this project, we'll be replacing uh, the floor surface. We're gonna go to carpet tiles. Uh, right now we just have a kind of a large rug that covers the majority of the floor. Uh, carpet tiles will be a little easier to take care of and kind of brighten the space up. Uh, we'll be uh, painting the walls and then adding um, 12 chairs and four tables. So right now we have two big cafeteria style tables uh, that are pretty cumbersome to move and a little tricky, especially if you're an adult, to get into comfortably. <laughs> um, so we have tried to strike a good balance between uh, usable for kids, but then also usable for uh, adults as well. Um, a lot of the kids have parents accompanying them to story time, um, so it's good to have a, a mid-sized chair. Um, and then finally, just a locking storage cabinet to um, kind of house all, all of the supplies. Um, so we went out to bid, uh, we received three responses. Um, ISCG uh, bid on the whole project. Uh, they were the low bidder and they come uh, very recommended from uh, a few other libraries in the area who have worked with them. Thank you, uh, Mr. Church. Do we have questions <coughs> for our library director regarding the youth room and what he just talked about? Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you for, uh, for bringing this to us and doing the work to make such a, a set of thoughtful improvements um, um, uh, ready to go here for us. Uh, for those patrons that do leverage that portion of the library, could you describe a little bit about when we might start and the approximate duration so that they'll know yes. uh, to what extent they need to make other plans? Um, it's probably going to be a two-phase project. So um, the longest lead time is on the furniture. So that can be up to 12 weeks uh, once we place the order before we'll actually see it. Um, so we'll work on getting the um, carpet tiles and the paint done first. That'll probably just be a couple day job to, to take care of that. Um, and then all of the furniture will come in at once at the same time. Um, so we'll schedule that around our story times and current summer activities. Um, as you mentioned, summer reading kickoff just uh, started today, so um, kind of prime time for the youth room, um, but we'll schedule around what we have um, currently in place. Great, thank you. Thank you. Additional questions? For our librarian. Just a comment, Your Honor. If someone has had to <coughs> set through a meeting in some of those at those small tables, <laughs> uh, looking forward to the chairs. <laughs> yes. I don't see what the problem was. I never had an issue, but <laughs> <laughs> may have had a problem. Any other comments? <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Uh, seeing no additional questions or comments from anybody here, Miss Boucher, would you please call the roll on M4519? Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. And Turback? Yes. M4519 has been approved. Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number seven? Discussion matter of discussing a potential <coughs> regulatory framework to permit marijuana businesses in Berkeley. Okay. Uh, we are going to have a relatively brief discussion at this point uh, before I turn it over to the city manager. The reason we are even having a uh, discussion was because the following item on the agenda we felt needed some context before simply being put out as an agenda item with the uh, ordinance attached to it. I can only assume based on our turnout tonight, unless there's something that I am missing, there are a number of interested parties in this room for this 
uh, item may and the following item. What is not going to happen tonight is a stream of folks coming up to the microphone trying to plead a case, guide us in various directions, uh, because we are not even close to that point. We are taking action today because we need to protect the city's interest as we prepare to move forward uh, next year. I will allow the city manager to go on from there, but I wanted to let everybody know this is not a meeting where we are deciding the number of licenses we're going to allow. It's not what we're talking about zoning. We're not even talking about the official ordinances yet because there is still a process that needs to go, that we need to go through well before we get to that point. I certainly hope that this does not disappoint any of our folks here tonight, but I also wanted to be up front before things started to get off the rails and I had to start hitting people with my gavel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for the, uh, the setup on this. Um, <coughs> As uh, talked about in my memo, we are, the city's administration is working towards uh, providing a framework to the city council to permit these types of businesses. Uh, the reason that uh, your, your packet ended up being a bit hefty this evening was to show the progress that administration has made in uh, working to meet those goals set forth at the April 1st work session. Um, there was questions uh, a little bit as to why we need to ask for a, uh, an extension on this, which is essentially the effect of the ordinance that we're proposing this evening. But uh, it's important to note that uh, when we first started talking about this uh, way back in November of last year after proposal one was passed, uh, Laura, the licensing and regulatory affairs um, division of the uh, state of, of government of Michigan uh, had tentatively said that December was going to be their, their um, rollout of the rules here. I know even up through our conversation um, through on April 1st, on uh, February 19th when we had the open uh, informational meeting, even up through our conversation on um, April the 1st, we all thought that December was going to be the time in which the state was going to be ready to, uh, to start taking applications for uh, adult use recreational marijuana. Um, that we geared, we geared our process towards that. Now the state has made, uh, has made this a priority for them, the governor's office, the, um, the, the new attorney general as well, uh, and Laura itself has made this an absolute priority to try to get this out as soon as possible. To their credit, they're uh, looking to actually roll the uh, framework out from the state level in, at the end of this month. They've been a little bit vague on the exact date, but um, even at their first public meeting, that they uh, held recently. Um, the director of, of adult use marijuana licensing has doubled down and said by the end of this month they would have it out, which means 100 days thereafter they're able to start taking applications, which actually looks more like September um, than December. And so given the city's meeting schedule, given the progress we've made so far, there is still a period of time that uh, city administration requires for the implementation of our local framework we are not gonna be able to um, move at the same speed uh, as the state and, and will not be able to have this framework in place by the fall, uh, as it were. Um, so b that being said, we wanted to be able to show the, the progress we've been being made. Uh, you'll see that, you know, as we've discussed with many of the council members, there are there's uh, items on our application process we're still working on. Um, but our next couple of meetings are July 1st, August 12th and September 16th. And so in order to have a uh, first reading, a second reading, and then allow for 30 days uh, for this ordinance to be effective, uh, we come to you today for the first reading. So that should set the schedule a little bit on the timing. Uh, we anticipate um, if we were to wait on this and we do a first reading on July 1st, a second reading on August 12th, uh, there's, a, there's a high likelihood that 30 days thereafter is not enough time for implementation. And at that point, um, the state would take licenses and essentially we would have no regulatory framework locally in order to um, you know, decide what is right for Berkeley and what isn't. We would be totally subject to the state's uh, framework, which we have not yet seen. Uh, and so in, in the face of that ambiguity um, and wanting to be able to exercise appropriate local controls, um, this is the context behind coming to you on the next agenda item and asking for an opt-out date um, but the sun sets so that we can start accepting applications uh, as soon as that's done. Okay, again, we are uh, still in discussion mode here. Mr. Baumgarten did uh, an adequate job, certainly, of explaining why. Again, this is the next item that we are going to take up 
uh, is protecting the city while we have time to do our due diligence and go through the process. The state uh, has been very aggressive. As they have shown, they've moved up timelines here uh, at least a few months. So in order for us to not be in a position where we have nothing in place, and it's kind of the wild, wild west, we are implementing a safeguard to make sure that we have adequate time um, to make sure that the city is protected and that we have uh, our ordinances and, and rules and regulations and procedures that will be followed as we get to this point prior to January 1st of 2020. Mr. Attorney, is there anything that we have missed? I think I just want to uh, state for clarification of, of the audience. I know we've talked about this many times, but I don't think we've brought it up tonight yet. Uh, the reason that action is being proposed this evening is because under the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act, which is the act that was approved by the, the voters initiative election last November, um, the city is in unless it opts out. So it means unless the city takes some affirmative action either to adopt its own full regulatory scheme, and I don't mean, I should say system, because I don't mean this to suggest is, yeah. a bad connotation, either that or to opt out, meaning that we don't want any marijuana establishments in our city. Uh, unless we do that, then we have to, we just sit back and wait for the state to just start issuing licenses and under our current current ordinances um, those establishments could be uh, located really in any of our uh, commercial almost any of our commercial properties so uh, we want to take a real close look at this um, the city manager's office uh, has spent a great deal of time on this I have worked with them as well to come up with the um, the draft licensing ordinance and the draft zoning ordinance that is before you tonight. It is, and I can't stress this enough, it is absolutely a work in process. We've only used the coarse <laughs> sandpaper on it. We're, we're, we're a <laughs> long way from the super fine <laughs> sandpaper that that will be coming but there are a number of issues so when you look at it um, uh, just you know keep in mind there are a number of things relating to um, the, the the standards the application process the application review process uh, the penalties a number of the moving parts are all things that need refinement but to get something to you as quickly as we could to get the discussion happening and to start getting at least some general guidance from council to make sure we're moving in the right direction that's why it's before you and meanwhile the what I'm calling the the temporary opt-out ordinance uh, and it is intended to be temporary it is intended to have a sunset date uh, put in it by council I just arbitrarily put in the end of this calendar year but it could be sooner than that uh, but that's just to give us a little bit of breathing room hopefully will uh, hopefully our ordinance process will come together and dovetail nicely with the state but since we're moving with or we're working with a moving target with the state um, I think this is the type of, of um, uh, set of regulations that you want to do <coughs> thoughtfully and very carefully and put in all due time and not just jump into something and fire it off just to meet a uh, I said a moving deadline so I'm sorry <coughs> mayor I went on longer than you probably anticipated yep. and frankly longer than I anticipated when I started <laughs> talking thank you <laughs> uh, members of council any questions comments again we are still in this discussion area uh, of our agenda today Councilmember Hannon yeah a uh, question I just thought of um, let's say for argument we keep the December 31st um, deadline um, do we need to when would we need to pass the additional um, laws and zoning um, to have the first reading the second reading plus the 30 days 
if you kept it, I, I think the city manager has the timeline all mapped out, but just in, in, in general, given that our ordinances, um, at least any of our ordinances that have penalties usually have, a, have that 30-day lead time before they go into effect, if we kept um, December 31st as the sunset date, then we would want to, uh, by the end of November, we would want to have our, our marijuana ordinances in place. Uh, as I said, the city manager's kind of m mapped it out because there's a number of moving parts. We have you know, multiple readings here, and then for the zoning um, ordinance part of it, the planning commission's involved in that too, so we have to factor in you know, their review and deliberation, their public hearing, they're making a recommendation to you, and uh, uh, the aim is that we would, we would definitely want the council to be in a position to act on something before the end of the year. Certainly. Other uh, questions or comments <coughs> on this question? Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thanks to you both for the additional clarity and context around uh, what we're doing here. When you were describing the fidelity at which we were working through this process. At first, I thought you were going to describe a different kind of paper uh, that we might be using. <laughs> but uh, uh, I do think it's interesting that um, we're actually responding to the state moving forward timelines. It's, it's, a, it's a positive uh, sign to see that uh, things are actually moving ahead of schedule uh, rather than the, uh, the expected delay. So I'm glad for that. And I do think that this is a wise move. Uh, it does not affect our intent to move forward uh, with a plan. Um, the easiest thing to do would just be to, to ban it outright. Uh, the responsible thing to do is to take the time that we're looking to do to, to think this through um, wisely, get uh, continued input from residents, businesses, and other folks that, uh, that know more about uh, the inner workings of all this so that we can put forth a, a program that will um, be, the best for, be the best for Berkeley. So I'm, I'm pleased to see this tonight. That's Mayor Blanchard. I thank you, Ron. I, I agree with the Mayor Pro Tem. I think we need to take uh, the time we need to do it right. There's, mm -hmm. having read all these ordinances we got and looked at the zoning map and everything, uh, it's quite complex and we owe it to the citizens to do it right. So I think we should postpone until the end of the year. Thank you. Any other questions from Council or comments from Council? Okay. Oh, oh yep. I, I just want to thank our city manager and everybody else who worked on this. It was very thorough and very well done and, you know, very extensive, explained very nicely. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our visitors, do we have any visitors who wish to discuss or comment uh, or ask questions uh, within the framework that we have uh, put at the beginning of this discussion, or at least I put? Uh, Kurt, I, I also wanted to say thanks. I appreciated the effort that went into the um, the preview, the draft that you have uh, put together. There's a lot of angst on, on, on the internet that people are worried that it's just going to be like old times where it's just this ban is going to be start as temporary and then it's going to become permanent. But I, I think that went a long way to show the intent is there and, and people just, I, I hope people just kind of you know, sit back and, you know, I as long as we see things going forward, I think they, they should, you know, at least give a little bit of um, leeway and, and, and be thankful that, that we are seeing some progress and it, it is moving forward. And, and I, I think they got to understand the, the need for the, uh, the temporary kind of hold off. And like you said, we don't want the Wild West to happen. So, so thank you very much. Thank you, Kurt. Again, just to reiterate, we were initially thought we were being proactive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the state moved things up three months on us, and now unfortunately we do have to be reactive, but we have to be reactive in a way that protects the city uh, until we are ready to move forward. Additional questions or comments from anyone that is here this evening? Good evening. My name is Mike Bahura. I'm, uh, I'm an attorney out of Troy who says all I kind of do is cannabis licensing, so um, I've submitted applications probably uh, in most of the municipalities in the state that have opted in. Um, and I, I want to thank you guys for being progressive on this issue, for, for uh, taking the steps to at least opt in and, and or 
at least consider opting in at the end of the year. Um, I did have a chance to look over the draft. I think it was it was a pretty thorough. I know, uh, as the city attorney said, it, it's a rough draft, but um, just a, a couple of things to keep in mind if you would consider um, the, the scoring uh, criteria. <coughs> I think are all uh, excellent factors, but I think you need to be a little more um, uh, precise on on the, the the amount of points that are allocated for each one of those criteria. What I've seen in other municipalities, <coughs> excuse me that have done a merit-based application like this is you're inevitably, unfortunately, going to get, uh, you know, people that are not happy with the way their application was scored or, hey, you missed some points here, you missed some points there. So the more objective you can make it, um, I think you're going to protect yourself and insulate yourself from any kind of, you know, potential uh, litigation. So the less objective it, it, it could be is, is probably the best for the city. Now, that being said, merit-based systems inevitably in every city that's happened, uh, Walled Lake, Hazel Park, Lapeer, um, Lansing, there's lawsuits. So I think that's why you see more of a lottery system in other cities. Uh, I don't advocate that. I think this is the right way you're doing it. But um, I guess my, my advice to you would be um, sh tell the people exactly where they're going to get the points and how they can get them. And then you can justify you know, your, your approvals or denials that way. And I'm happy to leave my card if you have any questions about how other cities have done it, what's worked, what, what, what hasn't. I'm, I'm happy to take uh, those questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else before we move on to or we, we close the discussion and move on to our next item? Going once, going twice. Well, thank you for attending and sitting so patiently. Um, nobody else? Okay. We will end our discussion and move on to item number eight. Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number eight on our agenda? Ordinance number 00619, out of considering the first reading of an ordinance to add new Article 14 marijuana establishments to Chapter 30 businesses of the City of Berkeley Code of Ordinances to prohibit marijuana establishments as defined in the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act to specify a sunset date and to prescribe a penalty for violations. Is there a motion to approve 00619? Motion to approve. Support. Motion approved by Councilmember Stedman with support from Councilmember Hennen. Mr. Baumgartner, I think we have sufficiently uh, explained what we are doing. This is, a, sorry, I'll take it. This is the <laughs> ordinance that follows <coughs> up the discussion. I am just going to read a couple of very quick sections uh, for those of you who do not have the benefit of having the ordinance in front of you right now. Section 30 800, prohibition pursuant to Section 6 1 of the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act, the City of Berkeley completely prohibits marijuana establishments as defined in the Act within the City's municipal boundaries. That is Section 3800. Section 30-801, Sunset. The prohibition and provisions of this article shall automatically expire on December 31st, 2019, if not sooner, repealed by the legislative action of the City Council. So. The sunset is December 31st as of right now at the latest. Council could move to do away with this sunset or this uh, ordinance sooner than that if needed. I'm not going to read the rest. There's severability clause, penalty, effective date, and publication. It's not a whole lot to this ordinance. Questions, comments from Council on this specific ordinance? And, and I guess my question to Council would be is December 31st? 2019 the day or the date we want to go with um, I was thinking potentially of moving it up a month uh, to November 30th just to give us a month to then start receiving applications and everything else prior to January 1st not a huge factor one way or the other we're talking about 30 days but I think it puts us in a position to be ready to hit the ground on January 1st as opposed to then start receiving applications. Uh, thoughts on that? I don't. Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Ronald. We'll let fit in with our timeline, backing up with all the meetings we have to have uh, with Planning Commission on zoning uh, 
and then it has to come to us and that well, and it, it actually lies with our timeline because we have to have this at the end of November anyway in order to have the 30 days we need to take into account uh, so essentially when we have everything True. in place it would line up actually right with that but either way okay I would agree with that let it stand let it stand so you're, you're saying uh, keep it on December or? Yep. Okay. Um, so my question was, um, I like the idea of pulling it forward. That certainly signals our continued interest in moving forward. Uh, so I like, I like that. Uh, my question would be if, if, the, um, if this were to sunset or expire prior to the full 30 days having, having occurred, uh, would we be eligible to receive applications while the, 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 um, um, while the 30 days hasn't happened yet for the zoning? You know what I mean? If, mm -hmm. if, because uh, if the timing fixes, then yeah, Mr. Yeah. Attorney. I think the answer to that is yes. Certainly, council can put that message out, can resolve to start accepting uh, applications, recognizing though that we wouldn't be able to you know, fully process or act upon them um, until the ordinance goes into effect. But we could, you know, we could start uh, giving them the the mile high view and so on and the you know start checking them for completeness and that sort of thing so come New Year's Day well maybe not New Year's Day but the day after New <laughs> Year's Day uh, we're we're ready to you know to move on with the process full speed ahead sure uh, as a quick follow-up question would um, would that create a uh, would that uh, overlap in windows here between the, the 30 days of the our ordinance becoming in effect and the November 30th, could that create a window where someone could slip in outside of our ordinance and file, you know, if they were already lined up with the state and ready to go, and they said, ooh, here's six days before, you know, because of timing that they could file something prior to our ordinance actually taking effect, would that put us at risk of, of having a little window there? Potentially, I think it's unlikely. Um, but yeah, there could potentially be a window where the state is poised to issue licenses. Our ordinance isn't uh, fully in effect. Um, I mean, we do perhaps have some other processes and procedures. I don't think that there will be anybody or, or, or very few applicants that are going to be ready to open for business the day they receive their licenses there's still a number of other processes a number of permitting processes site plan approval various things that they would have to go through that our licensing ordinance would be <coughs> fully in effect before they're ready to do business if it's right. the end of november and we're still not ready to go then we've done some, something terribly wrong oh i would and think that we would should not be i right agree for sure we would right. certainly we be ready to go by then i'm just wondering if there's a window someone could sneak in we've talked about parameters. this certainly keeping it um as it is at the end of the year um, and, and as I said at the onset of my comments I I just plugged that in rather sure. arbitrarily that wasn't based on any yeah. calculation yeah. on my part of the timeline but we have talked about that a lot with the city manager um, and we think if, if it's the council's preference to move it to November 30th um, we think we can make that happen I mean obviously it reduces our margin for error by a month but we still think that it's it's doable and we'd work within the time frame that council specifies sure okay so my uh, my thought then is if we're going going this way on this is to to keep the December 31st date and as we get closer to knowing exactly when that 30-day window will be then we have an action on an agenda to make this expire on that date so that does to, that's like a to repeal over. it sooner repeal it sooner Sorry. Yes. but with a we'll let's get that date when we get question. there uh, as opposed to setting it now and potentially Understood. having to extend it a week or something Understood. silly like that okay. right. Councilmember Dean I would concur with that I think it's a good plan it gives us some um, wiggle room um, if we're cruising along on this and we're feeling confident about what we're deciding and what we're finding then it gives us the option to make a change um, and I, I like having options so Councilmember Hennon? Yeah, I'm in favor of the December 31st. Looking at the calendar, our meeting schedule, assuming my calendar is right, which it isn't always, um, that 
Um, moving it to a November 30th date, we'd have to have our first reading by October um, right. 7th versus October 21st. So it in its essence only move it up uh, two weeks. So it isn't you know that much of a movement just because we don't meet. We only meet once in November. Yeah. Councilmember Gavin, thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I agree. I think the Mayor Pro Tem you know laid it out quite well, and I think there's no reason to open up a window, however small the crack may be. Um, you know, I, I think that we'll be able to get it done, uh, with, even with that December 31st. Uh, Ye of little faith in our administration. <laughs> 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 well, it appears that it will be staying the 31st. Um, you know, what, what I found is that when you have deadlines, um, whenever they are, things tend to get done, and, and they get done on time, and the longer that you have, potentially the longer you can maybe marinate a little more. Uh, for me, it was simply a signal that I want the city to be prepared ahead of time, a month ahead of time, and give ourselves additional time to, because there is a whole process that's going to take place after this, yep. the likes of which I'm assuming we have not seen in the city. Right. Uh, the sheer number of applications and going through those applications and, and the process that we will be using <coughs> to ultimately select however many selections there are. Uh, but again, we can always simply, if, if everything is in place, we can just move this in a meeting. I just like to be a little proactive and, and have a little, a little fire um, under our proverbial backsides to get this done and to get it done in a way that makes sense and is adequate and protects the city. And I certainly think we have plenty of time to do that. If we have an extra month, that's fine. Uh, it was just, a, like I said, I wanted sure. to send the message that this is something that I'm fully confident that we will have in place, have in place on time, if not even sooner, yep. and give us a little additional leeway on the back end. But it's clearly not the direction of my colleagues today, and that's okay. <coughs> so are there any other additional changes or corrections within just this ordinance, again, 0619 that we are currently talking about. Any other language or anything else that anybody wants to take a look at? Okay, anybody like to comment that is here today on this ordinance in particular? I said at the beginning, you may comment on agenda items while they are being considered. I just don't know what everybody's here for. All right. <laughs> uh, well, actually, we got a couple more agenda items. Never mind. Okay. Seeing none, Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on 00619? Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. And Turbrack? Yes. Ordinance 00619 is approved. Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number nine on tonight's agenda? Motion number M4619, matter of authorizing the city manager to renew the agreement for legal services with Halfley, Starin and Chris, PC. Is there a motion to approve M4619? Motion, motion to approve. approve. Support. Motion to approve by council member Blanchard with support from council member Dean. Mr. Baumgarten? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, uh, city manager, or the city attorney contract has uh, run on a three-year cycle. This is, would be the uh, end of the second cycle for uh, Mr. Steren's firm. Um, so he has uh, thankfully submitted a, an, uh, a legal services agreement to the city council to renew that relationship. Uh, I included in the memo a, a possible alternate um, route based on feedback I had received from council previously. But the agreement in your packet does cite a three-year duration. Um, wait, I can very happy with the uh, the service that we get from not only Mr. Steren but also Mr. Christ as well as our prosecuting attorney. Uh, we know them to be very well respected in the business. Uh, I did also include a review letter. I had an outside counsel review the application as, or the legal services agreement uh, when I initially received it back in April. He made some comments, Mr. Steren. Um, uh, had no issues with the items cited by uh, Mr. Baker of Baker Olowski. And uh, you have that letter included in your packet as well for context. Okay, uh, as the city manager mentioned, we are looking at the city attorney's contract. And I think 
Probably for the most part, many folks uh, think that the city attorney's contract is simply Mr. Starin, who is with us regularly for the most part uh, on television, but there is a, the other side, the prosecuting side, uh, that most of us probably do not see. Hopefully we do not see. <laughs> <laughs> if you see it, you're on the wrong end, and that's not where you want to be uh, for the most part, but uh, Dan Christ, uh, John's counterpart at, at this point in, in as far as the city, um, is concerned handles most of the prosecuting and unless you have spoken with public safety officers you would probably have zero idea or have any frame of reference by which to judge the job that uh, Mr. Chris does on uh, the prosecuting side so if you do have questions I would suggest maybe asking a public safety officer when you have seen them and they will uh, very happily give you their opinion uh, of the work that Mr. Chris has done on behalf of the city of Berkeley uh, in his prosecutorial role. Council. Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I sat along with you and Councilman Stedman on the committee that selected uh, this law firm six years ago. We went through a, a lot of searching, a lot of questioning, a lot of meetings, and uh, I think we received an excellent firm, and uh, I think we're getting a bargain, to put it honestly. I, uh, and I've sat next to John for six years now, so uh, uh, I think the firm is doing a good job. Uh, I do talk to public safety. Uh, I know that uh, Dan Christ is doing a good job as a prosecutor, so I would recommend that we extend the contract. Uh, Additional comments, questions from council members? Councilmember Hannon? Um, I would like to propose that we extend it for one year only, only as a matter of policy that we make it a habit for our vendors to go out to bid uh, more often um, for no other reason than that, just that it, I find it good policy to occasionally go to bid. Okay. Questions or comments? Anybody else? Councilmember Stedman. Um, on this committee that I participated in six years ago, we, um, we read a lot of applications. We interviewed uh, several firms. And I do think we are getting a bargain for very, very good services. And so I would um, support the three years extension. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. And um, uh, City Manager, thank you for bringing this to us uh, for, uh, for discussion again tonight. Uh, I've had the opportunity to see uh, Mr. Starin and others uh, in this firm at work, not only here in the city, but also the way they engage at the, at the state level uh, through the Michigan Municipal League. Um, and they bring back to this body uh, timely and relevant information about what's going on at the state level and with other uh, items of interest for us, and I think that helps us make better, make better decisions uh, as we weigh those different options. Uh, and so I'm thankful for that, and I also am uh, comfortable supporting uh, the extension. Additional comments on what we have before us? Okay. Um, is there anybody else that would like to comment before we move on? Charles Terrell from Berkeley. Uh, having contracted for legal services myself many, many times, I can attest to and sympathize with the committee who has done this in the past. Uh, but as uh, a process, uh, process thinker, a process person, uh, it should be bid more often than once every nine years. Uh, three years would be probably the maximum. Now we're at six. I would tend to agree with Mr. Hennon to go to one more year and get the bidding process started right away. Thank you. Any other comments before we move to a vote? Uh, Councilmember Hennon? Um, a separate question that was brought up by um, Baker and Elowoski that you know reviewed the yes. contract was the uh, arbitration clause. Um, I don't have any strong feeling one way or the other, but I wanted to just surface it. You know, there are pros and cons to uh, arbitration, and uh, to me, one doesn't. It, 
I don't see a balance, you know, a tipping the scales one way or the other, but just wanted to bring it up as, as a discussion point if anybody else had strong feelings on it. Uh, just to clarify here, um, let me pull that. I have that up as well. Let me go here. Go ahead, Councilmember Hunt, you can go okay, ahead. Okay, yeah. The, the we'll comment that the outside review said um, the agreement requires that any dispute be resolved by arbitration. I'll skip a bit. Um, while this is completely acceptable, it should be noted that in agreeing to arbitration, the city will be foregoing it, its rights to litigate any dispute before a court. And furthermore, use of arbitration is not necessarily more time or cost effective. Anybody have any strong feelings on the arbitration clause? I would tend to agree it is. We, we are aware of what it is. It is a part of this contract. I think we're comfortable with it. So before I call for a vote, um, I do have some comments of my own. Yes, I, I served on the committee with uh, some of my colleagues to hire a city attorney. And yes, it was a lengthy, uh, somewhat laborious, but important task uh, that we undertook. Again, we're talking about six years ago, still a very, very wide, wide range of services that were submitted. Certainly the costs associated with those uh, were very wide ranging as well. We chose uh, Hafeli, Stern, and Chris based on references, interviews, multiple interviews, and ultimately a council decision, uh, certainly as well with being good stewards of the residents' money. Uh, we are on a very, very favorable rate. Not that that is the yes. end of the day, but we are on a favorable rate. And again, according to the, I believe the Michigan State Bar, somewhere in the lower 20th or 25th quartile of legal services. Um, and do an excellent job, uh, not only on the city side here in our meetings, but again, referencing what Dan Chris does on the prosecution side as well. And, and whenever we have subs, uh, that sit in as well. I have absolutely zero problems with our city attorneys remaining our city attorneys for the next three years. However, I think that we have somewhat lost sight of making sure that we have contracts that are consistently bid out. Um, I'm not saying one every year or every three years. That's too much way too much, too much turnover. You have to develop continuity. We've had serious continuity uh, over the past six years, but I do think that we do need to look at what's out there, knowing that if we were to do that, potentially putting ourselves in a worse position in terms of cost mm -hmm. and in terms of wherever we settle. The grass is not always greener, despite what some folks might think. Uh, it does not work. That way, what was that? Was there a comment back there? Did I hear one? I didn't, okay. Uh, it is not always that way. However, as a matter of policy and making sure that we are consistently <coughs> looking at our contracts and don't fall into a spot where we forget to maybe go back out for bid on contracts, uh, I would recommend a 12-month contract uh, at this point to maintain our services while the contract is rebid in the past. Now, having said all that, uh, it appears that my colleagues have already spoken and made their intent, at least some of their intents known on this. We have a motion on the table. It is for a three-year contract. And if there is no further discussion. I will make a motion to make it a one-year contract. So we have another motion on the table. What? It's a motion to amend. You didn't say that. You had to. Motion to amend okay. motion to the amend. contract. Okay. By, by we know where we're going. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Council Member Gavin as we now have a amended motion on the table for a 12 month review or a 12-month contract I should say any discussion on the motion 
Councilmember Gavin. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, I second it just for basically for discussion purposes. Um, is there some way to come up with some, uh, I guess, some way to, to, to make a motion out, potentially pass this at this point, uh, that uh, demands a going out to RFP after the three year? I'm not sure the mechanism, best mechanism to do that, but it accomplishes the goal of, um, you know, like I, like you said very well, I think that, uh, you know, we, it's a bang for the buck. Uh, the services provided are done very well. Um, and at the end, we can follow the process that you know, seems to be um, you know, a good one in the end for the city. So I don't know if there's a mechanism to do that, uh, but just something I wanted to throw out there for discussion purposes. I feel like the mechanism to do that is this board, <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, at least this group here, and having the um, desire to know when the contract is coming up and how we want to proceed a year before that happens. I mean, I, I would assume we could probably put whatever we wanted into the language. That's very strange asking the city attorney about their. this. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Uh, John, but I mean, we could put that in there. I don't see any reason why we could not. Is, that, is there a legal issue there? It, it's absolutely legal, and I would just um, remind council whether um, you vote to amend, uh, whether you vote on the amendment and it passes to, you know, to make it a one-year contract, or whether you keep it at three. Yeah. The contract provides in there that at any time in the course right, of it, it's it an at-will right, right. arrangement. You can always pull the uh, pull the plug on it at any time. Uh, so, um, council, council always has that discretion to deal mm -hmm. with it and to uh, request proposals uh, or to make it uh, very clear. I mean, I've certainly been listening. It's not lost on me that uh, the council does intend to, uh, mm -hmm. to go out for proposals at the end of the term of this agreement, whether it's one year, three years, whatever. You've made that very clear. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? I mean, I, I don't think it's <laughs> the lawyer. It, it, a it lawyer answer. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I, I don't think in this case. Uh, yes, we could put it in there, but I think the intent is what the intent is, and again, this group at any time can can make that decision. Um, but we do have an amended motion. On you, have a, you have a motion to amend. Sorry, I have a motion to amend on the floor or on the table right now. Are there any other? Is there any further discussion on the motion to amend? Seeing none, and so Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on the motion to amend? Gavin? No. Hennon? Yes. Stedman? No. Baker? No. Blanchard? No. Dean? No. And Turbrack? Yes. What's the score? Two to four, or two to five, I'm sorry. It's the original motion. Okay. So we still have the original motion on the table as the motion to amend has failed. Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on the original, original motion M4619? Hennon? Yes. Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. And Turbrack? Yes. Thank you, Council. Ms. Boucher, what is the next item on tonight's agenda? Communications, beginning with Councilmember Stedman. Okay, and Councilmember Stedman, before we start, uh, just so everybody is aware, we are going to have communications now. Uh, we will be having a, a closed session following that, and then we will be potentially, most likely, coming back to take action after that closed session, but we're going to do communications now in case some of you do not want to stick around for the end of uh, or the duration of the closed session. Okay. Councilmember Stedman. Um, okay, first of all, um, the beautification committee, um, they are going to plant flowers at the Oxford Towers Park uh, June 30th at 10.15 a.m. Um, anybody can come who w likes to plant flowers. You don't have to be a member of the beautification committee to do that. So uh, that's Oxford Towers Park, June 30th, 1015 a.m. Um, the library, please check the website for all of the uh, June and into July programs that are offered. T tonight there was an ice cream social that I was unfortunately unable to be at. 
Um, but uh, this kicked off the summer reading program. And, uh, and I hear that it was, there was quite a crowd there. And it's always a very, very nice event. Um, the Citizens um, uh, Engagement Advisory Committee, um, I had to leave that meeting early, but we were in the midst of a discussion um, about a communication plan for uh, the advisory committee and discussing block um, uh, captains, not block captains, block ambassadors and so on, and how to communicate with the people in the city that are difficult to communicate with and uh, uh, let them know what is happening, people that may not be on the internet and so on. And this has been the goal of that committee since, since we established it uh, within this last year. Um, so um, if anybody has any ideas, send an email to uh, Jay Grossman. He's the uh, person, the employee that's in charge of that committee or Natalie Price or Sue Sotero or myself and give us your suggestions on how we could reach you if you're not on the internet. <laughs> um, and that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Blanchard. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we have had the, uh, the Art Bash recently, which was a great success, and I just wanted to thank all the volunteers that worked on that and the Lids for Kids. We had two great things in the city that, that went well. The only problem with the Art Bash was uh, the power outage that shut down some of the businesses on the south side of 12 Mile, so that was a bit of a concern. But uh, I heard from a number of, of uh, residents about how great the Lids for Kids was also. and. I was working at the Art Bash and I needed a new, ra new battery for my radio. I had to come back to the station to get one. I had to park two blocks away and walk <laughs> through a crowd of kids to get to the station to get a new battery for my radio and, and to get back to the Art Bash. So uh, I'd like to thank all the volunteers that worked at both of those events. They did a, a tremendous job. Uh, June is Pet Preparedness Month. So those of you that didn't know that, and I didn't know that till today, but I looked it up. Uh, to create a pet preparedness kit, ensure the following items are ready are readily available in a safe location. Pet food, w bowls, water, pet carrier, leashes, collars, photo IDs for your pet or pictures with you with your pet, immunizations, veterinary records, and pet medications, first aid kit, contact list for pet friendly hotels, veterinarians, and out of town family or friends, and toys, ropes, and sanitation bags. There's a thing passed out on the table over there about from Michigan State Police about pet, pet preparedness month. So please take a copy of that if you'd like and take care of the pets. They can be a key thing in the, uh, in the event of an emergency or disaster. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mayor Pro Tem. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. A couple quick updates. Uh, the Downtown Development Authority, as we've heard, is helping uh, sponsor a couple of really awesome events coming up here soon. Uh, look for the... Um, uh, uh, the event's uh, June 18th, um, looking into Couples Night Out uh, and the uh, Robina Rhapsody, uh, as mentioned earlier. And then further again, August uh, 22nd is the second Robina Rhapsody, along with a day-long district-wide sidewalk sale uh, to create even more excitement uh, in the city. And if you do have interest or questions or comments about the, uh, the work that's going on uh, with Coolidge between 11 and 12 Mile, uh, visit the website downtownberkeley.com and then select the Coolidge <coughs> Highway like item under the Design the District menu. So basically downtownberkeley.com. Uh, uh, the Historical Committee uh, was at the, uh, the Art Bash and they wanted to thank everybody who stopped by that table and also um, a gratitude to all the volunteers that helped make that event a fantastic success for the city and for the artists and for the folks that uh, came and enjoyed that, uh, that experience. Uh, the Historical Committee was recently contacted about the um, uh, availability of the coffee mugs. I demoed one a meeting or two ago and don't have mine with me here tonight, but uh, rest assured, if you'd like one, uh, you can uh, go to the, the museum itself. Uh, it's open most Sundays from 2 to 4 and Wednesdays from 10 to 1. It's also available at the Berkeley Public Library, uh, which is a great place in so many ways, uh, including the fact that they're open until 8 o'clock uh, from Mondays to Thursdays, for those of you if that schedule works better for you. And it's also available at the clerk's office here in City Hall. And as mentioned, the museum is open for visitors, whether you want to buy a coffee mug or not. Uh, this uh, on most Sundays from 2 to 4 uh, and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
the Technology Advisory Committee meets next, uh, their next meeting is on Wednesday, June 26th. Uh, so in the meanwhile, uh, uh, some good technology hygiene tips. Uh, be sure to back up your gadgets, so, you know, computers and cell phones and tablets and those types of things on a regular basis. And uh, keep your software up to date to make sure that you uh, have the latest patches and fixes from a security perspective and, and as well as additional functionality. And finally, it was Stephen Atchison who said, blowing out someone else's candle doesn't make yours shine any brighter. And uh, as we think about uh, the entering the summer months here and the opportunities to, to spend more time with one another, those personal conversations are so important. That's a lot of what makes Berkeley such an amazing city is the caliber of the, the residents and the folks that, uh, that make this, uh, call this their home and the businesses. And that interpersonal conversation is so valuable. Uh, and let's continue to, uh, to create rather than criticize. Let's help support someone up rather than slap someone down. Let's appreciate our commonalities rather than admonish our differences. And let's all do our part to help enable the city's motto, we care, because we are a fantastic city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Council Member Dean. Thank you, Your Honor. Tomorrow, Tuesday, June 18th, is the tot lot night from 5 to 7 p.m. Kids are encouraged to wear their bathing suits for some water fun. Wednesday, June 19th, we're having an outdoor concert in the park with the Royal Oak Concert and Jazz Band at Community Park. In the event of rain, the concert will be held inside the community center. Um, there will be a community garage sale June 21st and 22nd. A list of participating homes will be available online later this week. And you may also find this list in the community center at City Hall and the library. Um, I had the opportunity um, to serve dessert at the Summerfest Senior Picnic. Um, it was supposed to be outside, but again, given the rain, we were inside at the community center and um, guests enjoyed a delicious lunch and entertainment from the Paint Creek Boys. I can attest to the fact that a good time was had by all. <laughs> and the, um, I, I was able to stop at the ice cream social at the library tonight um, before coming over. And we just we have great events in this city for all of our residents. Um, there are a lot of kids, a lot of families out enjoying the nice weather, ice cream, and kicking off their summer reading. So thanks um, to Matt Church and his staff for putting on such great events. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Hennon. Yes, the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, their next meeting will be Monday, July 8th at 7.30 in Council Chambers here. Uh, they don't have any cases to hear, but they are going to be reviewing their bylaws and electing officers. Then the tree board, they met last week. Uh, they're working on the tree list for fall planting. And just a reminder that the deadline for uh, getting a um, tree for the fall is uh, the Friday of Cruise Fest, which I don't have written down off the top of my head, but that Cruise Fest Friday is the deadline for uh, getting a tree in 16th. I think it is the 16th, August 16th. Um, they're also working on looking at planning for future grants. They weren't able to make the deadlines this year, but they are um, you know, laying down the groundwork for uh, future grants. Um, there is going to be a joint tree walk with the beautification committee. And the purpose of this is to distribute door hangers to homes that don't have trees in the easement to remind them of the tree program. Uh, they're going to be meeting on Saturday, July 13th at 9 a.m. Uh, at the parking lot uh, across from Catalpa at the Berkeley High School. You get an assignment, you take a handful of uh, flyers and ha hand them out don't have to talk to anyone, so nice day for exercise. Um, their next meeting will be Monday, July 8th at 7 p.m. at the library. Thanks. Thank you. Council Member Gavin. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, there was no Environmental Advisory Committee since the last council meeting, but the bike corral was a huge success uh, at Art Bash, so thank you for all uh, who utilized that. It was a lot of fun, got to staff it for a couple hours, and there were a ton of bikes that were out. Uh, especially in comparison to last year. I know it's partly no small part because of the weather being uh, so much nicer. So uh, the next meeting is June 27th at 6.30 in uh, Public Safety Conference Room. Uh, similarly, the Planning Commission has not met since the last council meeting. Uh, the next meeting is uh, Tuesday the 25th at 7.30, which is also the public hearing date for the uh, proposed La Salette development, uh, which you can find out some more on the city's website. Um, as I highlighted last month, Planning Commission uh, also voted to begin their meetings going forward at 7 p.m. Uh, after this next meeting. 
uh, to keep it in relative uniformity with other city meetings, uh, but they will have to amend the bylaws to make that change. So that's why there's this last meeting at 7.30. Uh, and then the Coolidge Traffic Committee met, uh, covered uh, some topics, including uh, water main extension and it being substantially complete with final completion expected by uh, about June 30th or so. And then also looked at some initial speed numbers uh, since the installation of the speed indicator lights on Coolidge. Uh, there won't be a July meeting, so the next meeting will be Thursday, August 1st at 8 a.m. in the Public Safety Conference Room. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Baumgarten. Uh, members of council uh, covered all the items I had, so I have nothing this evening. So. <laughs> Mr. Attorney? Yes, a couple of things. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Baker's comments about the historical committee reminded me of, of one thing. Uh, although we do not have a designated historic district um, in the city, this may still be of interest and of some benefit to um, some of our properties, residences, and commercial and possibly even including La Salette that was just mentioned. Uh, it appears that uh, the state legislature momentum has been picking up to, uh, with the proposed House bill to reinstate the tax income tax credits for historic rehabilitation of properties. Uh, those credits were allowed I don't remember whether they were allowed to die or whether they were killed, <laughs> but during the, uh, <coughs> the previous governor's administration, and so the thought now is to, to reinstate them, and as I mentioned, with some of our projects like La Salette and so on, those kind of things uh, may come very, become very important and very helpful to try to maintain the, the character and perhaps adaptive reuse of these um, uh, these historic properties that we have. Uh, I often talk about uh, marijuana and marijuana regulation. I think we uh, covered that pretty well tonight. Uh, it's been very busy. You can see there's been a lot of heavy lifting, especially by the city manager's office. There will continue to be, and as we work on these things, I encourage all council members to, you know, if you have any particular questions or thoughts, comments, or concerns, feel free to send them my way or to the city manager's way. We don't want to be communicating uh, with each other by email and run afoul of Open Meetings Act, but uh, certainly I encourage you to do that. I know Council Member Hinton had a, a couple of questions uh, uh, in anticipation of tonight's meeting that we were able to give him preliminary answers to and we touched on them a little bit today. Anything we can do to help um, move along this very important subject. Last thing I'm going to uh, mention is, uh, meanwhile, we are still working on a, um, an ordinance to bring to council uh, concerning um, small cell and gas equipment, that's distributed antenna system equipment that uh, <coughs> is coming into our rights of way. There's a lot of uh, demand for that, several carriers, I think there's four all together uh, that want to install things, including in Berkeley. And we're gonna be seeing a lot more of that in the future, not less, especially with the automated vehicles coming and the 5G and all that sort of thing. The um, state of Michigan largely took um, much of our discretion mm. away from us, just like they previously did with the Metro Act and fiber optic cable, they've done that now with the small cell uh, in DAS with the new law that just went into effect in March. Yet um, uh, there still are some things we can do and we need to have a process um, and trying not to let that interfere with, with the marijuana, which is a, a higher priority, but I'm just letting you know you will be seeing something on that uh, in the near future, but not, not to derail the the Marijuana Express. <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a few items. First off, I want to again recognize and thank Tom Bustins for his leadership, uh, the outgoing commander of the Legion. Um, thank you for being here tonight to talk to the residents and uh, give them a goodbye from all of them, although we know this is not goodbye for gone or for, for long. You'll be back. You'll be around. Don't get too far away. As was mentioned, I do want to also thank all of the folks that made the Art Bash and Lids for Kids happen. These are events 
primarily run by volunteers, okay? Volunteering their time. Doesn't mean they're volunteers in the city. Yes, I'm very well aware that there are public safety officers uh, that have a job and get paid for it, but they were doing this on their own time uh, for the kids in the city. And it's a tremendous, tremendous event. Um, and for one of the first times in a while that I can recall, the weather was absolutely perfect for Art Bash and Lids for Kids. Um, and there are many other volunteers that, that helped make those events happen. And that's why Berkeley is such a special place. That's why we care, because we have residents who volunteer their time. We have business owners who maybe are not residents who volunteer their time to put on these tremendous events in the city. Um, and, and it's just a special place. And as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna see that all summer. I mean, with Summerfest and Cruise Fest and all the other events and, and Robina Rhapsodies, Art and About. Uh, it's gonna be a great summer in the city. I want to thank some high school students. Um, I'm only gonna use their first names. Eli, Lily, Megan, I'm sure you, you know who you are. You wrote me uh, letters regarding what's happening on Coolidge, um, about the bike lanes and about what's going on, a number of things. So I appreciate hearing from the high school students their perspective, uh, even if it was maybe a directive to find something that's <laughs> important in the city and to email me or <laughs> send me a letter. Actually, it wasn't email, it was an actual letter. So I certainly appreciate that. Uh, and Isabel. Isabella, I should say, Isabella, sorry, I have a daughter named Isabel. This is Isabella, wrote regarding outdoor fire pits in the city. And that's certainly a topic that we've had many times. This was in particular um, regarding the use of oil driven, okay, propane driven, not the open burning. Um, so I, I wanna thank all of them for writing me and they will all be getting responses and they will all be sent. We're not gonna do an email here because I don't have email addresses for you, so you will receive those in the mail. Um, the last group that I need to talk to is my community center group. May was an extremely busy month, as many of you know. Uh, everybody who was on that committee that I announced uh, about a month and a half ago will be receiving an email by the end of this week with our first meeting. Believe it or not, part of the problem is finding a room that's available to accommodate the size of folks that we have. Over the past couple of weeks, we have been pretty well booked up in the city, but everybody will get a, uh, you'll receive a, a, an email from me with the first meeting, and then at that meeting, we'll talk about the rest of the meeting schedule moving forward, but again, that will happen this week. That is all I have for now. Ms. Boucher, would you please read item number 10 on tonight's agenda? Closed session, matter of considering whether to meet in closed session to consider a personnel evaluation of a city employee. Is there a motion to go into closed session? So moved. Support. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem, supported by Council Member Dean. Discussion on the motion going into <coughs> closed session. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, there will be most likely action taken after this. Could not tell you how long the closed session will be, but there will be something after, so I just wanna make sure everyone is aware of that. With that, Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll to go into closed session? Stedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. Hennon? Yes. And Turbrack? Yes. Okay, we will now go into closed session, and as I mentioned, we will return at some point in the future. Are you? Yes. <laughs> 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 Thank you.
back here we are to our regular uh, agenda or regular meeting Ms. Boucher would you please call the roll Gavin here Hennen here Stedman here Baker here Blanchard here Dean here and Turbrack here Ms. Boucher would you please read item number 11 on tonight's agenda Motion number M4719, met of authorizing the mayor to execute the employment agreement between Matthew Baumgarten and the city of Berkeley, subject to final review and approval by city labor council. Is there a motion to approve M4719? So moved. Approved. Support. Okay, motion by council member Dean with support from Mayor Pro Tem Baker. Okay, council, we have the city manager's contract uh, before us. We. Uh, conducted a follow-up evaluation uh, before there are a couple of changes to the contract that I want to make sure that everybody is aware of <coughs> um, I worked in, and spoke extensively with Labor Council as was mentioned uh, Brandon Fournier on this and this is Brandon's work it is certainly not mine I am not an attorney and I don't claim to be one or want to necessarily <laughs> play one uh, no offense to our attorney um, the biggest change, or the changes, the first one is in the severance, uh, the, the length of severance. So uh, we were not in, uh, we, we, we were a little below where we should have been in terms of what is typical for a city manager's severance. Um, according to Brandon, the average is six to nine months. We were below that, and what we did was bring it up to six months, the 180 days. So that is the first change in the contract. Uh, or before we go on the second one, any questions or comments on that or any problems with it? Okay. Again, this is consistent. Yeah. From Was that just looking at like a broad view of, of yeah. similar situated positions? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. yep, yep, yep. As you said, six to nine months is the norm. We were slightly below that. It's not a huge yeah. increase, but it puts us in line with where we should be. The second item is the duration. So the first contract was at a finite duration on it uh, again in speaking with Brandon and, and in our past experience um, here with managers uh, without there's typically after the introductory period not necessarily a signed duration you have to uh, understand what the city manager's role is and how the city manager operates you can see why this makes sense in the community um, so it typically will review on an a or renew on an annual basis again we have the authority at any time to get out of this contract. It's not something that we have to, unlike something else that we talked about today, if we were to say, look, in three years, we're gonna rebid the city manager's role, how do you think that would impact the person sitting in that chair? Even if we said, this is just something we're doing. The city manager position is a little bit different. I have to imagine it would be incredibly difficult to do your job um, while there is an RFP going on for your job, while you're also applying for your job. And in the event mm -hmm. where we need to make a change or Matt decides he wants to, to move on on his own. Uh, we would then begin that process and, and working with the MML as we did a few years ago and we went through that process and even the time before that. Um, that is again a, a change. I don't, rec I don't believe there are any other changes to form <coughs> in this contract. Um, not that Brandon or I uh, spoke of. So comments, questions on that last item? On the second item I should say no changes I would like just to <coughs> make one comment though I think um, I think that it's really great that you have made yourself an established part of this community by moving here integrating your kids and your wife and everybody into into the city of Berkeley as a resident and the city manager I know it can be a double-edged sword at times but um, but nothing but good, I think, can come out of it in your case. Thank you. Yeah, that's a battle we waged for a long time. Yes. Pardon me? At least that was a battle that was waged in this community for yeah, a long time. Great. And uh, certainly not been anything that we've had to think about at all. Um, any other comments? B before we'll go to general comments, but any other comments on specifically the second item on the renewing annually as opposed to a finite time frame on this? No. Makes sense? Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Everybody? Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, I guess, uh, general comments uh, on... Sorry, jump the gun. <coughs> no, you're good, you're good. No, that's, <coughs> those are the things that yeah. we were looking for anyway, mm -hmm. but uh, any additional comments anybody has? 
Mayor Pro Tem? Uh, sure, thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, this city has gone, come a long way uh, over the past few years, um, in in large part due to the active role of our of our current city manager, the work that he's done. The, to to my colleague's point, the, the degree to which he's engaged in this community far more than just as a profession, but as a person, and, and that means a lot. Um, there's there's continues to be growth opportunities, and and he continues to to chalk up the wins uh, in the things that he's uh, done and helped the city accomplish. So. So I'm, uh, I'm pleased with the, the quality of the work that we've been getting and, and pleased with the plans we have to, to increase that even more. Uh, and I'll certainly be supporting um, this contract tonight. Okay, thank you. Additional comments before we move forward? I agree. <laughs> thank you. Um, then just to wrap it up before I call for a vote, uh, I would agree with, with what uh, the Mayor Pro Tem said. Look, it is, uh, not an easy position to be in, actually. It may be far easier to not live in the city where you are managing uh, because then you don't have those over-the-fence conversations or at random events, but but that's not something that you, you wanted to be involved in and immersed in. That does mean a lot. Um, it's a difficult position any any time where you have to respond to residents and communicate with residents. There are always going to be folks who may not agree with your answer. Uh, which, which we're familiar with here as well, but it happens um, for you as well. I think the important part in, in any role is to continue to improve. Um, there's always going to be areas where we can improve. It's the same for all of us in our everyday lives, and it's certainly the same for you in your chosen career and your profession. And the important thing for me is that I've seen that, and I see that you have a plan in place to continue um, to grow and to improve in, in those areas where you think there's there's opportunity. Um, and, and that is important to me. If there were was no growth, um, despite the things that we've talked about in, in closed sessions and evaluations and even just over the phone or in, in public, if I didn't see any improvement or the desire to improve, um, this would be a very different conversation, at least for me right now. Um, and until I stop seeing a desire to improve. I, I don't see a reason to go down that path, but um, that is important. It's important for us to continue to grow professionally, and as, as we just mentioned, surrounding yourself with good people, uh, with good folks and study groups and contacts and networking and, and always having you know folks to go to who have been there and, and rely on as a source of, if nothing else, in a sounding board. Um, chances are sometimes we need to blow off some steam and having somebody who's been there and understands what it's like to work in the role is important to be able to have those folks to go to and, and having a study group of, of like-minded individuals who are in the trenches as well with you. Uh, we will continue to receive those updates, uh, but with that, if there are no additional questions or comments, Ms. Boucher, would you please call the roll on M 4719? Hennon? Yes. Dedman? Yes. Baker? Yes. Blanchard? Yes. Dean? Yes. Gavin? Yes. And Turbrack? Yes. And with that, I will call for a motion to adjourn. So motion moved. to adjourn. Support. Motion made by Council Member Stedman with support from Council Member Gavin. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Done. Thank you all. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it.